So in the last couple of episodes, you saw that hive number two, which is the one you're looking at here, had been infested by a number of small hive beetles, and I was pretty worried about what was going to happen. So I'm back here on the 24th day with two sticky boards to place underneath the screen inside the bottom board. The sticky boards are covered with Vaseline and I'm working here without any kind of protective equipment because I'm working again from the back side of the hives. So the bees are coming in and out the front entrance. I've got a special little secret door here in the back side that allows me to slide things underneath the screened bottom without the bees being able to get down there and see what I'm doing. So this sticky board will trap any small hive beetles that the bees knock off of the walls or chase down into the bottom of the hive. They'll fall down through that screen in the bottom board and they'll fall onto this sticky board and the Vaseline will trap them and they won't be able to get out again. It will also catch all kinds of debris. Varroa mites uh, will also be trapped on this. The small hive beetles were uh, about a handful of them in hive number two and this is hive number one I'm also treating although I haven't seen any in hive number one I'm pretty sure that they're going to be there but I want to take a look first at hive number two because it was the one that I saw had the, the hive beetles the last time I was out here so I'm real anxious to see whether my treatment with the little cuts brand beetle blasters with the mineral oil was doing any good. The one good sign here is that the top cover is no longer covered with honeycomb and they haven't built honeycomb up through the little tunnel in the feeder either. And by having this ventilated inner cover I have allowed for more airflow but I've also kept them from trying to build honeycomb up through that little tunnel there into the top cover. Got a number of dead bees up on the top uh, who probably came up from the outside, got up in there, and then couldn't figure out how to get back out. And there are a few angry guard bees down below trying to get through that screen to get to me. Yeah, this is another nice surprise here. Not a lot of honeycomb hanging on the bottom of this feeder like we had the last few times. So that's a good sign. They're not building a lot of excess comb everywhere. Now let's check the beetle blasters here. I was kind of hoping they'd be full of dead beetles but there are no beetles in there. Maybe a dead bee or a beetle on top. And the second beetle blaster is also fairly empty. So those are not catching a lot of beetles. Bees have built up into the second story and into the center frames there. This frame, comb on that one, both sides, comb on here, on this side, and nothing on these. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, three and a half frames, four and a half, five and a half, six and a half frames of nothing. And got a little bit of comb being drawn on half, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four. Roughly. Now pulling out the individual frames could get a look at these darker cells are pollen and it looks like they've already started putting some larvae into some of them so the queen is laying eggs in the upper floor that's very good so I'm gonna put the hive back together now without the feeder the uh, new bees should be emerging right now the 1500 a day or so that the queen has been laying since she was first released about three weeks ago. Uh, those new bees should be hatching now in fairly large numbers 
and so I'm going to now encourage the bees to go out and forage for their own nectar rather than trying to continue to feed them with the sugar water solution. I'm going to add an additional two of the beetle blaster traps with a little bit of vegetable oil and hope that by having a total of four of these traps in each hive on the top frames that that will start catching some of the beetles that run up into the top of the hive and that my sticky boards will catch any beetles that are down at the bottom of the hive as they fall through the screen and get trapped in the Vaseline layer down there. Now when I put this top cover on, I'd really kind of like to not shake the bees off onto the ground, but to let them walk back down into the hive from the top here. Don't know if that's going to really work very well or not. But uh, I've been shaking bees onto the ground way too often, and I think I've lost a lot of bees that way. And now let's take a look at hive number one. This one last time didn't have any beetles at all that I had seen, but I have to assume that if they're in hive number two, then they're going to be in hive number one as well. So the last time I was out here, I put two of those beetle blaster traps in the upper frames. So let's take a look, take the top cover off and see what we got in here. Once again, the top cover was completely clean because of our ventilated inner cover, and the bottom of the feeder has also only got a few bees hanging on it. No burr comb has been built. That's good. You can see that that frame's empty, that frame's empty, that frame's empty. This one they're starting to draw a comb on. This one's full, that one's full, that one, they've got some on one side, that one's empty, that one's empty, that one's empty. The fuel blasters, empty, nothing in that one, nothing in that one. So we'll pull out a couple of the empty frames to free up a little bit of space so I can move around the loaded frames. We'll just pull three empty frames out, set them off to the side, and that way I'll be able to get a better look at what's going on with the loaded frames in the center. And there we can see that they've been populating the comb with pollen, that's the darker cells.
on a lot of these frames you can see the larva inside the little cells. They're little white U-shaped things. This particular frame has got lots of darker pollen cells and then lots of larva cells. Um, the far edges are not even built out quite yet and they've already started populating the center with, uh, with eggs and with larva and with pollen. And we can see down inside the hive, the lower frames are all also buzzing with activity. Up on the tops of the, some of the frames you can see bees just standing there fanning with their wings. It's kind of an interesting process. They're actually ventilating the hive by circulating air through there, which also evaporates some of the water out of the nectar cells that they've built and allows it to create honey. You can see them kind of lined up there in some cases with their wings fluttering as they are pumping air up through the hive from the bottom up toward the top. There you can actually see a hive beetle. It just flew out. And you can see the protein patty that some of the bees are chomping down on. That is their pollen substitute and it's absolutely essential for brood rearing that they have a source of protein and so the protein patty does that for them. And then I took whatever bees were left in the feeder and uh, tried to dump them out toward the entrance so they could find their way back into the hive and brush some of them off onto the top frames. Of course, that stirred them all up. They got pretty ticked off at me. There were a few guard bees that chased me around from that point on. <laughs> So the two hives look like they're in pretty good shape to go on for another week or two. I'm keeping the feeders off of them so that they will have to go out and forage for their own nectar now. I did leave the protein patties on so that they can have their pollen substitute. And now the little bees that are going to be emerging out of those cells in the bottom brood chamber will be able to start their lives as little bees.